the Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and pretty much anything else that we find interesting, because that's what this show is about. Fair warning, as always, we like to have a little bit of fun. It might be a little bit of snark. Also, shenanigans. The tidiest bit of humor and or laughter, if that's not your thing. There's plenty of things to put you asleep in the podcasting and video world. I'm Vin Stone here each week with mm-hmm. Joe Bryan with her Republic of Gamers. Eat something. Yes. I can't read all of it. And, and, this, uh, this shirt was from TwitchCon from 2017. Okay. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> and the... Just no, nothing on your shirt this week, Pedro. I'm kind of shocked. Uh, Pedro Mateus? He's got his uh, nice no, outfit I'm on. I'm wearing an actual shirt. <laughs> <laughs> nice outfit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. This shirt is like six years old, but yeah. <laughs> hey, man. If it gets the job done, um, hey everyone watching this live or after the fact, listening to the podcast, a uh, little bit of catch up. I've been playing with a lot of stuff. I know last week I reported on the Magewell quad and then it's playing around with it because it has the jet engine fan in it because it's made for like to be put in ingestion servers and stuff like that couldn't have it in the studio because you could hear it upstairs or downstairs however you wanted to play that game mm-hmm. i did a little bit of surgery on it so i tracked down the js2 one, 125 micro connectors and i plugged them into whatever the thing is called on the uh on the board it's molex whatever happy to report it works, and I found a piece of kit, like these little things that um, are going to be in the review video of how to get that soldered together without using solder, to which I will say, that's a lot of extra work compared to having a soldering <laughs> iron in some... <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get it. Like, you don't need soldering irons and soldering in your life, and you can take that with heat. It's like, man, I could be done with this when I'm sitting there with a heat gun. Just come on, come on. <laughs> and it finally like did its thing. And I didn't burn my fingers too many times. But also, think twice before you uh, plug a heat gun into your UPS. Because it, it gets real shouty. It's like, nope, don't do that. <laughs> it draws a lot of amps. Yeah. <laughs> Watts, yeah. 300 watts. And, but yeah, played around with that. Also, fair warning. Um, I finally did a stream uh, with um, near what's the latest old one remake? What's it called? Replicant. Replicant.1.29. That's got a game breaking bug in it that you're not going to run into like halfway through your first playthrough. So um, maybe hold off on buying that if you had a plan for this weekend. You're like, hey, it's Friday. I want to pick that up. Because it does launch out of the box for Proton. Runs fine. Uh, but yeah, that's not fixed. So you definitely might want to hold off. Jill, you're going to talk about Disneyland? Yeah, I am actually. Because I'm excited because <laughs> Disneyland is opening Friday. Yay! After more than 400 days from the lockdown. <laughs> it's 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 pretty great news. And um, I am not going until I'm completely vaccinated. I got my first shot. So I got that taken care of, and in another month, I'll get my second one. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Pedro Mateus. Yeah, no, uh, a certain someone, which I will get to thank for their punishment later on, got me an SSD, so I've been playing around with uh, Fedora 34 on the uh, on the laptop, this completely insane that's now plugged in uh no, <laughs> massively Pedro, overbuilt laptop it, cut the laptop on take it out <laughs> basically i just went on ebay and i found all of the spare parts i could for a dell 5480 and yeah there it is (laughs) and yeah it's got 32 gigs of ram it's only got an i5 because the i7 motherboards were stupidly expensive and my thing doesn't Mm. my budget doesn't stretch that far uh so yeah the now that it has a proper one terabyte ssd thank you very much uh it's uh it's a proper laptop now (laughs) (laughs) i'm glad to get extra storage i definitely needed the extra storage because um i'll talk about this in a minute uh but yeah it's like hey you want to play this game like yeah it's 118 gigs oh um hmm. (laughs) Ooh. <laughs> had to make choices <laughs> kind of like the blender foundation did with cycles x uh they got they got some um 
Well, one big thing I wanted to point out, you know, it's 10 years since Cycles was announced. They're, they're reworking some things, you know, with the project and all the other fun stuff. But as part of this new architecture, they are going to be nuking OpenCL support from Orbit. And that basi- yeah, basically boils down to OpenCL. You mean that hot mess? And they're like the blender said, yeah, that hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to think about it. That's why projects like DaVinci Resolve, air quotes, support OpenCL, but they very much have a use at your own risk outside of the Mac universe. And even then, um, that's just the thing. Now, they are going to be working with AMD and Intel to get the new kernels working on their GPUs, but... You know, you're going to be stuck with a Blender 283 and 293 LTS releases for now if uh, you want to use, you know, live that OpenCL lifestyle. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was the last time you had like a major OpenCL release? It's been a while. (laughs) (laughs) It has. (laughs) Yeah. So what I was really excited about this is, you know, being able to use the Intel denoiser AI rendered in the in the viewports. Uh, this is very, very exciting because that's kind of been the bane of an animator's existence, being able to to render in the viewports in real time while you're working. And it just just makes life a lot easier. So, you know, it makes sense after 10 years, uh, we get an overhaul of cycles. It's it's definitely needed. <laughs> so uh, kudos to the Blender Foundation for doing this. It's very exciting. And it's just going to, you know, yeah, make things faster. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sucks for anyone with a Radeon 7 that was hoping, you know, oh, new version of Blender. Now it's going to be good. Oh, Never well, mind. We, <laughs> we have a secondhand experience of um, what it takes to, because I, I would call Strider technically adapt ish. <laughs> he only created Lutris. He has no yeah. idea what he's doing. <laughs> he, he's getting there, man. He's getting there. Oh, uh, we love you, Matthew. Th- there was the, I, I believe it was a full two day saga of getting Blender working correctly with the Radian drivers for the OpenCL support. And yeah. That was, it's just and then the games wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not a fun state to be in, but I understand why they had to do it. And um, yeah. yeah. So we get and a little itty bitty update to the Linux kernel at 5.2. Oh, yeah. This is actually, so small. it's actually a big, big update, despite what Linus Torvalds uh, stated. Uh, so Linus has released Linux kernel 5.12 with lots. It has lots of new device support, including gaming, which is really awesome. So now we have support for the Nintendo 64 and, and their game controllers and data cartridges. That's a big oh, deal. Okay. That's support. All right, that, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> that support is in the kernel now. And uh, thanks to Sony, we have the official DualSense PlayStation 5 support, which is really sweet. And uh, one thing I was really happy about is the open source AMD GPU graphics driver now supports FreeSync, HDMI, and overdrive of AMD Sienna Chichlid GPUs. That's a big deal. <laughs> Lots of uh, Navi 21. Just call them Navi 21s. It's, it's Listen, the 6800, 6800 true. XT, and the 6900 XT. I, I have a brilliant precinct solution on this um, same monitor Jill has. We can go from, I believe, 60 to 63. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's dope. anything like my UHD monitor, it goes <laughs> from 60 to 40. It. It is the worst <laughs> VRR window. Oh, boy. And occasionally it blinks something. Huh, yeah, it does. <laughs> it goes a little black flash on occasionally and it scares you. Well, <laughs> but fortunately, you, you, once you in get a while. used to it. And what you're wondering yeah. about, we have 43 inch um, Dell, not Dell, uh, Acer monitors. And, Acer Predators. Yeah, they're yeah. IPS. They're great, but they have issues. And they're the reason they were like 300 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> But they're beautiful, beautiful Ultra HD display. And the other cool thing about Linux 5.12 is it has better support for Microsoft Surface Laptops, which is always a good thing. And actually, 
lots of great support for new cell phones, including the Alcatel Idol 3, the OnePlus 6, and 6T, uh, Samsung 19070 Galaxy S, the Sony Xperia phones, and a whole bunch more. It was really quite quite impressive. <laughs> Oh, lots of yeah, I think devices. what Linus meant by tiny was the merge from the previous release candidate to yeah. the final thing. That that, <laughs> that might have been it because yeah, no, this is a huge kernel, it's and huge. I I for one am very much looking forward to making proper use of the dual sense. Valve's effort yeah. has been valiant, but uh, it's better if the people who actually made the firmware make the drivers. Thank you, Sony. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. <laughs> you got to think about that. I mean, we were talking about on um, Letting Steam Guest Weekly, should we do on Saturdays, like when we saw that Sony had opt up into the kernel, like, hey, yeah, I'm going to send you some patches to make this work. I'm like, huh. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you're looking for the people to uh, get it working, Sony's not a bad place to start now, is it? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there was the whole speculation, oh, are they going to build like a streaming thing, like a steep link type of situation but for the playstation based on linux and that's why they want that up and running i don't know maybe, but maybe yeah we'll see <laughs> stick around towards the end of the show there's definitely some more ps4 gaming um raspberry pi yeah, yeah. but fedorf well, speaking of new releases <laughs> Fedora Workstation uh, and the other spins, they all have uh, their newest version. It's out. Uh, Fedora 34, you can get it. The Workstation version comes with GNOME 40. The KDE version comes with KDE 521, so you know what to, ex- uh, what to expect. It comes with uh, Pipewire uh, by default, BTRFS, uh, and the transparent compression uh, algorithm that it was implemented is now the default as well so you get to save a significant chunk of uh, disk space if you just have a bunch of teeny tiny little files that's that's very nice and btrfs is also very nice for ssds which you should be running at this point mm-hmm. and uh, they're saying that they hope uh, because of the improved whalen support and the fact that whalen comes by default they're hoping to have the nvidia driver sorted during the um fedora 34 a lifetime which is basically any point between now and fedora 37 mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah they got time <laughs> okay well i'll ask you this you, you, get, lot. you put it on your laptop right <laughs> yep okay did did you uh play around with gnome 40 i did not no monster Aww. I just downloaded the KD spin. <laughs> you you, you have to get rid of this known <laughs> prejudice, <laughs> man. Perfect opportunity. How about, now we were talking in the pre-show, you gave it a mention about uh, Pipewire and how uh, that was working for mm-hmm. you. Yeah, it, it works because I was, th- basically this laptop is my fallback if anything should happen to this box just before a show and I need, okay, I need something that I could just unplug the USB for the M box to and plug it in here and away we go. Uh, and basically I just set it up to go, all right, it's working. I can just mm. do that if needs be. So I launched QJAC CTL and I was going to start it to see if anything threw any errors. Why is it all already running? Oh, pipe wire. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> that mm. takes care of that. All right. <laughs> it's pretty neat. I'm glad to see it. Yep. Yeah, this release to me was just fantastic. And actually, that's how I w- how I started uh, playing with GNOME 40 was because of the Fordora 34 beta. And having Wayland and Pipewire work out of the box when testing the beta was just amazing. That was so cool. It's here. Wayland is here and Pipewire is working very well. <laughs> and I like the new GNOME. Yep. It's kind of like... Uh, the horizontal workspaces are kind of like WebOS, actually. <laughs> hmm. I've been enjoying it. <laughs> well, someone had to. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> but it was a little too breakneck for my taste. But again, I am very excited to see um, just how it all plays out. And NVIDIA, come on. Or you can play around with Wayland. I'm like, ah, it's all wonderful. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> just release some drivers please <laughs> yeah you lost nvidia i know just, you gotta do it after all this time someone finally caved that it was nvidia i did not see that coming you know what you know what you gotta think of from nvidia's perspective like we're we're used to like hey cuda we won there did we um, we're, we're gonna do this this way in the 
industry. I was like, we're going to do it this way, but we're in video. And they're fine. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> 2104, though, is also. Yeah. Uh, exciting. Another release. So, Ubuntu 21.04 Hair Suit Hippo has been released with uh, lots of new changes, almost as many as the Fedora 34 release. <laughs> so some of my favorite things about Ubuntu 21.04 um, in, in when I was beta testing it were the, the, the new wallpaper for the hippo. Here, suit hippo is really cute. <laughs> it now defaults to the Yaru, Yaru, Yaru dark theme and Wayland. And Wayland works beautifully on Ubuntu out of the box as well. But there actually are a couple other changes that were just announced to Ubuntu 21.04. And uh, Mark Shuttleworth, the CEO of Canonical, he actually states native Active Directory integration and certified Microsoft SQL server on Ubuntu are top priorities for our enterprise customers, for developers and innovators. Ubuntu 21.04 delivers Wayland and Flutter for smoother graphics and clean, beautiful, design-led cross-platform development. So, yeah, this this article that we found um, online from Canonical, you know, it, it just goes into detail about the, the Microsoft SQL server on Ubuntu and the native Active Directory integration. And it wasn't, you know, during the beta, we didn't hear a lot about this, so... This is really good information. Yeah, no, I was playing um, in corporate um, speak BS uh, bingo uh, while I was reading yeah, that right. article, and I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I only, <laughs> I didn't even get a full line. That was disappointing. Uh, I almost got a full line. That was one short, but yeah, no, uh, it's yeah, no. Twenty one oh four is out, and I look forward because Fedora having will and by default. Well, it's already been the default for a while. But um, that doesn't really matter because Fedora is not all that popular. Ubuntu, on the other hand, I very much look forward to the influx of uh, Linux sucks because of stuff not working in Wayland. I very much look forward to that. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and go out on that limb and say I think it's fantastic that both Ubuntu and Fedora are going to be shipping like default Wayland experiences because yeah. you get to force that at some point because I said this before and I'll say it again. It is nigh impossible to compete with good enough. And that's what X is. X mm. is good enough. But to get this going, this is what we got to have. Slam into that wall. NVIDIA is even willing to play ball, which I'm very happy about. Something I do want to mention, though, on behalf of OBS, uh, maybe not. Um, I'm mentioning, I'm going to relay this. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, in case you need a stable OBS 26 build for Ubuntu 2104, there will be a direct link in our show notes for it. Because uh, the current one is not going to have a working browser. And um, you're also going to have some issues with uh, Pipewire. So you'd want to use the not stable branch if you're using the PPA for Ubuntu, but use the development or beta branch. I forget exactly what it's called there. But please note that, like the audio updater, once you install these, we'll try to update the version that's not going to work so well. So keep that in mind. App Mark Hold, kids, learn to use it. But <laughs> the most groundbreaking feature of Ubuntu in 2104, ladies and gentlemen, the dark theme. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I like that Yaru dark theme. It's Accessibility so improvements. Navigation, to be fair, sure, they've had ambiance there for a while. Pedro. Yeah, they Pedro. just made a default. Let me now. just have something, okay? <laughs> Let me have one thing, <laughs> Okay, I'll give you that. They made it the default, so there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Get out there, go play with it. Um, yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see. Well, we get some new things, and then some things go away. Yes, very much like um, yeah. Blender, Firefox decided to remove something. Yes, so right, this Jill? is actually... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me for a moment. My mouse stopped working. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so yes. So uh, Mozilla has just released uh, Firefox 88, and uh, the big news here is that they are disabling FTC 
FTP support within the browser, which is huge because, you know, Firefox was the go-to for a lot of people to do file transfer protocol. So this is a really, actually really big deal. And, you know, there are other really good uh, uh, pieces of software out there to use FTP, but we're going to miss it in Firefox. We really are. And, you know, I haven't done FTP with files in many years, actually. And the last app I used was FileZilla. And you can also use the Conqueror File Manager for KDE and uh, Nautilus FTP server in Ubuntu. So there are other ways to do FTP, but it's sad that Mozilla doesn't support it anymore because of security reasons. This and that's really true. what it and, boils down know, to. Both users <laughs> can, I mean, <laughs> you're inconsolable, both of them. But another thing that went missing is, you know, speaking of unused features, uh, this gets rid of the take a screenshot feature from the page actions menu. Which, mm-hmm. too, I will happily say, I didn't know that was there. Um, <laughs> I think the whole page actions menu is going to get the uh, boot at some point. What do you think is going to They be? were saying? Yeah. <laughs> but I will say this. If you need access FTP, SFTP, anything like that, um, I think this will apply to anything. But I know for I'm XFC, I'm using Thunor. If you just install the um, GVFS fuse in the backends, you're good. That's what I use because I don't like having separate applications and I just have them bookmarked, you know, to our web zone and our storage and all that fun stuff. Yeah. And let's be fair. The loss of FTP isn't really that big an issue because Think of the you, children, can still Pedro. Browse, <laughs> <laughs> you can still yeah. browse most uh, FTP servers via HTTPS. Which works. Yes, exactly. And you can still download yeah. the things. It's not, you know, the typical FTP experience, but hey, it, it, it's you could do the things. Uh, and the uh, things that they did introduce, because it's not all bad news, uh, they it can now handle PDFs with embedded JavaScript for those kind of people. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know who you are, Adobe. Hang on. I, I got the real <laughs> questions. That This was a feature that I was really happy to see in Chrome way back when, once you clicked on the PDF and it just opened in the browser. I'm like, ooh, the future is here, kids. Is this more that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a big deal. <laughs> uh, that will, uh, uh, Firefox has had the PDF renderer for a while. They had to disable mm. it uh, for a couple of releases because there was a massive security um mm exploit that mm-hmm. made use of the uh, PDF built-in reader. But yes, that is back working again. And uh, y- if uh, your touchpad support is, if, you, if you're on a recent enough laptop that supports the pinch to zoom gesture, it'll actually do it properly and smoothly in Firefox now, which it didn't. If you've tried it before, uh, the page would go blank and then it would reappear with everything completely... <laughs> blown out of proportion so yeah it's uh it's got smooth um pinch to zoom now which is nice that's uh, the teeny tiny little things they help <laughs> that's good i think overall this release is absolutely a net positive but um mm-hmm. one thing i do want to throw out i was curious research purposes i'm like can w get handle f tip yeah i can so there, there yeah yeah there's another <laughs> option yeah <laughs> that's definitely. what i'm gonna tell you when i need to download the, that's gonna be in my any guide i do it's like w get why because you <laughs> Can't mess that up, allegedly. <laughs> Something I've played with, we were talking about in the pre-show, was a long time ago, it was Synergy, when Synergy first came out. And they're like, hey, look, this thing is made out of Scandinavian witchcraft. You can just set up <laughs> mouse and keyboard between laptops, PCs. Wasn't it Android, maybe? That sounds familiar. I don't know if that worked or not. Yes. Basically, yeah, any uh, operating system that supported any kind of uh, modern computing. <laughs> so times have changed, you know, Synergy's kind of evolved into doing a lot more than just that. But the, the spirit of that core component is still very much alive in Barrier. You know, and this, <laughs> I posted this on Twitter and people said, that looks a lot like Synergy. I'm saying, well, it is basically <laughs> Synergy. It's forked from Synergy. <laughs> yeah. But with a focus on just maintaining um, that one thing that it's supposed to do very well, very goodly, and eliminate the barrier <laughs> between your machines. And this is going to work with Linux, Mac OS, anything that you're going to be throwing at it. But the reason I was impressed with it, simply because I was able to 
just out of curiosity, because I'd set up our um, Jackbox or a DAW server, Jack server in the studio with a video card because I was playing, typically I run it headless with um, X1140. Like, hmm. Okay, so I have a USB switch that I use for these PCs and all that. And, mm, it was very difficult to type over here and try to visualize what was going on over there. Like, that was a non-starter. So maybe yeah. we can get these tied together. <laughs> The reason I want to give this a mention, I know the project's been around for a minute, but the this was one of those, this was just, just work. I mean, no playing around, no messing around. It's available in uh, Debian 11 repo, probably 10, but uh, it's probably available in, that means it's going to be in Ubuntu, Fedora, and everything else. But I was able, all of these machines right now, the one you can kind of see if you look here in the corner, there's another monitor there. These. I just move over to them from my primary monitor. I'm like, oop, just mouse over, oop, mouse over, mouse over. And it's seamless. All you have to do is just set the screens up, give it, you don't even have to give it an IP address. It can auto discover, but I gave it an IP address and that's it. You know, you set up server, mm -hmm. install the client, done. Never have messed with it again. So I just want to say good work, Barry, your team for just having that available. I, like things that are super low friction and just work out of the box. Also, if your friends are like over, get that installed on their system or your roommate, have some fun. Live a little. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ben, I'm so happy you played with this because I have actually been wanting to because I have many KVM uh, switches in my computer room for my several hundred computers. So having a software option with would help with all the cables <laughs> yeah 100 percent. Uh, and you could have them all yeah. running at once <laughs> yeah so i i'm seriously i'm gonna be uh trying that trying this when i especially when i set up my room after i get done with all the changes it is <laughs> the beauty of it and it's seamless it works exactly like you would imagine it would i move you know mm -hmm. the cursor over here it just shows up on this monitor it's real time there's no lag delay nice. just works yay Awesome. Yep. Okay. It's been a while since I've got to And do now this. something else that uh, people have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Microsoft loves Linux. We haven't had uh, one of these segments for a while. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you may have uh, heard on the, uh, the grapevine which is weird, and you should totally go check that out. But the <laughs> uh, fine folks behind the Windows subsystem for Linux uh, have enabled officially the GUI support for applications uh, if you're running them from inside WSL. Now, that's if you like me and you've had access to a Windows 10 machine and the moment that the WSL was introduced, you went, oh, I want to install like a desktop <laughs> environment on that and see how that works. And I did. I got XFC working. It was slow, very slow, but it worked. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, no, that was two years ago. But now uh, the big news is uh, hardware acceleration and audio support. So if you're running your native Linux applications, you can get some I can finally full run, on get 3D it. acceleration. Yes. <laughs> yes, you can run Get It and you can run Audacity. And Audacity will actually listen to your microphone. Uh, so, yeah, it is. Uh, it's. It's progress, and it makes use of that DirectX yeah, 12. Uh, uh, there's a Yo Dog in here. Let's run when uh, Linux Edge from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was watching that video too. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is a Microsoft product, so it's, uh, yeah. I mean, okay, the Audacity stuff that was interesting, you know. Um, get it running on Windows. I'm sorry, ew, but. Audacity is working. The GPU access with WSL, uh, that's going to come in use, I, I'm guessing, because some people really want all the power and flexibility of Linux with all of the black box security vulnerabilities, Windows, and it's as simple as WSL dash dash install. So. Yeah, so this is actually really good for the developers so they can, you know, test it on multiple their their applications on multiple platforms. And uh, now you can actually run run uh have gpu acceleration without running vmware linux virtual machine on windows mm -hmm. which is really convenient it's really convenient and i was actually like pedro i was really excited about this because being able to have audio support mic support and 3d graphics support launched at the same time i didn't expect that i i 
thought, you know, I was expecting a slow rollout like Microsoft does. <laughs> so. <laughs> but it's uh, the, this hereby removes the excuse that uh, developers need to go to the Linux store and buy a Linux computer. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Of course, oh, they still would okay. have to go out of their way to open PowerShell, which I know to some of them that's just outright inconceivable because Linux is stuck in the 90s or the 80s or the 70s, like some of them like to offer. Hi, Gary. Uh, that uh, <laughs> over reliance on the command line that we have. Listen, uh-huh. ne- next thing you're going to try to tell me to use CMake without a GUI. So uh, you, you just march right out never of Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> never heard of it. I have no small level of respect for anybody who sets up a working build environment on Windows because I've watched people go through it. Wow. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> not, no. It takes some time. <laughs> Praise be to Linux. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. All right. Um, hey, it. Interesting times, strange times. Yeah. Still technically Mm -hmm. times. All right. That's all I can say about that. (laughs) Because we all know 100% Microsoft loves Linux. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So beautiful people, if you love us, you can help support our show. We don't have ads and all that. We're community funded over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we make all the cheddar a little bit. We do get, which is awesome. Subscribe to us on Twitch. We got a store. If you are a patron, you get access to our Discord. Same way if you are a Twitch sub, come hang out with the lovely Miscreants the other six days of the week. That is probably the one thing I'm proud of out of all of this is the community we built there. Also, you're going to get access to prototype videos, stuff I'm working on. Before anyone else, you get a custom show each and every week. If you like putting this audio in your ears, this is only the juicy middle part of the show. There's a beginning and the end. You can get the two-hour version of it podcast format that's kind Mm -hmm. of brilliant if you need that also there's a video available as well and hey go buy some t-shirts or some stickers you can see it (laughs) that's a sticker it sticks very well i gotta give it credit so (laughs) it's still there so yeah (laughs) nice thank each and every one of you and speaking (laughs) of patrons we gotta thank a brand new one minus nine new patron rolled in showed up in discord he's like sup fam probably wasn't expecting all the sup fams back i'm like ah because very very it was a good time for him to walk in it's like everyone was online it's like oh hey (laughs) and uh pedro you gotta think uh one certain matthew commento yeah. I do see. Uh, I made the mistake of uh, pointing Strider in the right direction to the correct uh, SDL2 library that uh, Torchlight needed to run the first Torchlight, and he said, "Oh, you'll pay for that," mm-hmm. and uh, he sent me his punishment. So I, I, I got a thing to read. <clears throat> Oh, there's a cussy word in here. Uh, this is for getting Torchlight to work on Lutris and not acknowledging it, not acknowledging it as real work. Next time you pull, uh, you try to pull this S, uh, I'll send you something bigger. Consider it a warning from Matthew Commando. I consider it a Aww. challenge. Uh, <laughs> so he sent me a uh, Corsair, um, not Corsair, Crucial, NVMe um, M.2. Uh, SSD, <laughs> one terabyte. Uh, it's not Gen Four. That's uh, I thought you were going to wild man. It's like this is an M.2 <laughs> DVD burner. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this is <laughs> these are really nice SSDs because even though they're only Gen Three, uh, they are very fast. They have the density to be very fast, and they're not QLC, so that that's a bonus. Yeah, those uh, are the, controllers. Yeah, nice and dense. You and guys are thing uh it's now powering this uh here laptop that i mentioned earlier running fedora 34 and since strider is such a big fan of btrfs i know that he is (laughs) it didn't um backfire on him twice or anything so (laughs) that's what i'm running on uh the ssd what he offered me so thank you very much strider and i do take that as a challenge I did want to give a little shout out um, from Foxy, uh, one of our patrons, because I got up this morning and uh, didn't get an email notification until like much later in the day. But when I finally came in here and cut everything on, I saw that I'd received a Steam gift. I'm like, oh no, what's this for? Oh, oh he said you want to. Yeah. Yeah. It was like <laughs> Yippee Kaye, Delete Expletive. And it was, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. You bought me a copy of GTA Texas. And. 
I, Grand Theft Horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah, guess I'm, I'm going to play around with that. I've been meaning to, uh, I wasn't going to burn a heretic purchase on it. And uh, thank you for doing that. And, uh, we'll, we'll and I need to thank Foxy too, uh, because he bought me the uh, Henry Stickman collection, which if you're not familiar with the old mm. uh, Newgrounds, Harry Stickman series, very yes. short games, they have like one or two panels at most, but the, the humor was on point. I very much like those games, and uh, thank you, Foxy. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Yay, hey, Foxy. So let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. First slice of pie that's kind mm. of out of frame, but hey, that's best uh, I can do on short notice. Looks like there's there a little, like, it might be a chocolate pie or a blueberry pie. No, dark. no, no. You see the thing I in the upper left-hand corner? Burnt. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, oh. just, that's disease. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, I think that was a little too close to the back no, of the oven. Pedro, in my medical opinion, that is the diabetes leaking out of the pie itself. <laughs> that is sugar. Yeah, no, sugar, yeah. if you get a little too hot, it goes that color. Mm. <laughs> so let's talk about using pies for, uh, you know, if you're an upstanding citizen and you want to steal somebody's pie. Shenanigans. Yeah, <laughs> this is another Pine Zero hacking gadget for physical penetration testing. That means you got to be there and make Maybe you forget your crowbar. <laughs> uh, well, you could always pull a um, Gordon Freeman or y you can use uh, Resolve and the guide actually gives you a very good, uh, it, very simple instructions on how to set it up. Uh, the only thing you're going to have to source is the USB type A uh, mail connector because that it doesn't the pipe zero doesn't come with that by default that that's that's the thing you're going to have to do everything else yeah it's just pi zero and a little <laughs> acrylic uh bit to hold everything together and yeah you plug it in and it identifies itself as an ethernet connection because usb shenanigans and mm. the computer goes oh you're an ethernet connection okay here's all my things and you have access. Congratulations, you have local access. System level local access. <laughs> so it's uh, this is just a good excuse to take all of your um, USB holes and fill it with hot glue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and if you if you took a spray can and instead of the clear acrylic, you painted it black. Maybe get like a full case for it so no one can see PCB or anything. And you just plug that into the back of an office computer. It would be years before someone noticed that. Years. Years. <laughs> yeah. That's kind yeah, of a this neat is quite a, Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot cheaper than using the land turtle, which I'm very familiar with. You know, you can just make your own. <laughs> so. Yeah. Basically a DIY land turtle. <laughs> Crowbar. Team Crowbar on this one. Uh, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, that's not the only bit of Raspberry. We get a little bit of gaming stuff that I wanted to throw in. We don't typically we cover do. gaming things on Wednesdays. We stick to Saturdays on that. But I thought this was cool enough to give a mention. This does work on the Pi, which is very nice. Uh, and there's even an app image for it. So there's that. Uh, this is uh, Chiaki. It's a PS4 remote uh, play client for Linux. It's not just Linux. There's a bunch of different uh, operating systems that it supports. And from what I hear from um, other people, despite me having a PS4, <laughs> uh, the mm. previous owner of that PS4, uh, for example, tells me that the latency with the official Windows software for uh, PS4 remote play is atrocious. So maybe this is better. I mean, you're going to be running it on a Raspberry Pi, so maybe not, but it can't be worse, right? <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, you will need uh, DualShock 4, obviously, for reasons. Though there is no reason that it wouldn't also work with other controllers, but they actively recommend that you use one of them. And uh, the PS, I think they got the PS5 remote play working now too, so yeah, one of them. One of the things <laughs> I'd like to see it on this, man, yeah, outside of the app image, uh, this is available from Google Play or FDroid. And so if you need Yay. that APK goodness for your... Um, Android device, Mac OS, there's the DMG image, Windows, whatever. Uh, Switch, there's even a README for instructions on that. Oh. Mm. If you if your Switch can run homebrews, thanks, NVIDIA. Mm. <laughs> I think it's... Uh, <laughs> Just slightly. 
slight architectural flaw that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, maybe this is really good. And again, like if you're sitting around with a like raspberry pie, especially like a pie four, man, it's probably it's gonna crush this, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're and the um uh, the most complicated step here is just getting your PIN. Uh not not the PIN, the PSN account ID, because the ID number is uh well, it's not publicly available. So there's a Python script that guides you through what you need to do. And once you follow the process, you'll have your PSN ID and then you get your pin uh, on the PlayStation itself that you're trying to do. It's in, what do they say? Uh, remote play add device uh, or on the PS5 is a setting system remote play link device. So there you go. <laughs> done and done. All right. We're almost out of time. Awesome. But if you want to get a hold to us, uh, contact page, linuxteamcast.com, fill out a little form. Now, don't worry about it. I had somebody ask me this earlier this week. Like, what service do you, we use our own service? This is all internal. Doesn't go anywhere. You don't have to sign into the Googles or anything like that. Give us a name. Give us an email. Send a message. Pick the right show. That's always a bonus because it lets us know. Or if you have a message for Pedro, Jill, or myself, just pick other and say, hey, Jill, or hey, Pedro, and it'll get to the right person. It will be mm-hmm. brilliant. But we got to bounce that out of here. Thanks for watching. But we also need to thank some people with some credits because I make credits I always do <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you to and, our uh, new patron very, very, Minus 9 <laughs> yes a very big thank you to uh, Minus 9 and Foxy and we Strider get a who got a uh, holy toast <laughs> resub yeah we do? oh holy toast thank you very much is it toast or toast? <laughs> toast holy toast <laughs> <laughs> holy toast <laughs> so is it Swiss <laughs> <laughs> Would that is. be Holy Toast? Aww. That's such a cute name, Holy Toast. <laughs> but yes, thank you all very, very much. And uh, yes, uh, Strider, Foxy, and Minus Nine get very special mentions this week because, Aww. well, they decided to be extra Stewart's awesome. Five. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And we've been enjoying having you in chat, Minus Nine. You're fun to talk to.